One of them can stay and one has to go. Which one will it be? I already have the answer, but I thought I'm gonna show them to you and uh, I just wanted to hear your opinion. What would be your choice between these two? So uh, I'm just gonna show you the Steinhardt box. I showed this in the review. That's on, it's on my channel if you wanna see it. I'm gonna put the link right up there or there. I don't really know where it goes. The instructions manual warranty card and it's not a warranty card it's a, a paper that shows how you could uh, return the watch if you wanted to this is the box the actual box it's some kind of faux leather uh, actually a good box it's a elegant box nice box to have and when you open it up the watch sits on a pillow and we have this foam here protective foam looking good i think we have some yeah tags and links in there i even keep the plastic i keep everything from my watches when i buy them it's good when selling them so that's the steinhardt box a good box for the money you pay attention to detail and nice craftsmanship really good so the davosa box also comes in this paper uh car carton 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 and we have uh, some uh, papers here no it's not there put away the paper box and we have some kind of uh, uh, when i bought my first brightling it was bakelite but i don't know what this is plastic i guess I open up the plastic and here we have the papers inside pillow where the watch rests we have this faux leather impression inside we have some links and yeah it's basically to uh they look the same i mean the boxes this is plastic the other one is full leather so it's uh, take it or leave it nothing is more spectacular than the other both the good boxes good packagings but let's talk about the watches i'm gonna put out my piece of wood here and here we have the Davosa, and here we have Steinhardt entering. So these two watches are basically, as you can see, homages of other watches. We have a Submariner, Rolex Submariner homage here in the Davosa, and it's actually, uh, I'm not a Rolex expert, but I just saw this today. Uh, I think it's a homage to the older uh, submariner models not the new one because of the smaller uh, uh our hand and uh, not our hands our markers they're pretty small and uh, the new uh, submariner with the maxi case has bigger our markers than this one and then they have we have the steinhardt ocean one gmt gmt 39 millimeters it's a gmt homage <sighs> with the red GMT hand and the red Ocean Rover. Ocean, not Ocean Rover, and the red Ocean One text there. So I've actually decided uh, to keep one of these watches and I have actually already sold the other one, but I'm gonna tell you a little 
about my decision and why I decided to do so and a little bit about the pros and the cons about of these two watches um, let's talk about the Steinhardt first the Steinhardt here is a 39 millimeters watch it's uh, I've talked about all the specs in the separate video uh, review of this watch so you can check there but I'm gonna put the specs up uh, in the corner in the left corner there so you can see it's a really nice looking watch and it's almost perfect in any way every way uh, you know I, I had to choose between the 39 millimeters or the 42 when I bought it so I ordered both I couldn't decide on which to to keep but since I've gone from bigger models to smaller models in the recent years I, I chose to keep the 39 millimeters and send the, the 42 millimeters back I really like the bracelet screwed links I like the clasp it feels assuring it's uh, really stiff and I like that because it feels like it's never gonna drop I like the subtle Steinhardt logo on the clasp there on the locking mechanism and as you see sturdy case back have talked about poseidon and his lame seahorse a couple of times but i'm not going to do it now and it's a really uh, really it's a watch with really good specs we have sapphire glass ceramic bezel insert 300 meters water resistance we have a swiss made movement with the eta 2890 93-2 or the Salita W SW 330 uh, either way both good reliable movements we have a really nice bezel with a really nice bezel action and clicks it has some kind of metallic ping when you swing it around But it's really dead on centered and uh, and assuring clicks doesn't move anyway it's really stuck there 120 clicks bi-directional sorry unidirectional so i really like the watch the one drawback that i think it has is the cyclops it's really poor it even looks a little dull or you can see it looks like um, some some kind of a um, it, like it has a, some kind of a milky white sheen to it it looks a little uh, dull I don't know why uh, the watch has a perfectly good AR coating on the underside but maybe they missed to put the coating on the Cyclops I don't know and the crown I like the crown I like that it's a stamped crown but it's it's uh, quite hard to um, operate it's really small for my hands uh, and we have I mean the charging it up is really easy and smooth and setting the time is also really smooth and easy but when you uh pulling it out when you screw it back in it's hard to screw back in all the way and it's uh, when you've done so it's a little hard to pull out because of its its size it's a little small to me but it's a really good watch uh, and i'm gonna put it right back down and i'm gonna talk a little bit about the devosa turnos so this is my newest uh, newfound love the devosa turnos i really like the look of the submariner and uh, I really don't have the money to buy the Submariner right now because of my GMT Master 2. It took a, a big hit in my savings and uh, I don't know, maybe one day uh, I'll be able to afford both the Submariner and the GMT Master 2. Maybe I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna sell my Tudor Black Bay GMT, I don't know. But anyway, let's talk about the Devosa. It's a 40 millimeter watch ceramic bezel insert sapphire glass 200 meters water resistance uh, i'm gonna have to uh no i don't have to do that yet i'm gonna do it later it's a really really nice watch screwed links i really like the bracelet it's a little broader than on the steinhardt and we have the same type of clasp with the devosa name there really like that uh, 
actually let's take a look i forgot to mention the adjustment for uh, pins four pins of adjustment and we have four there as well they're really similar these watches uh, they have their own kind of movement in here i think it's a eta but it's modified they call it something like dv and i don't know swiss made um it's a good looking watch a really good bezel action we have 120 clicks unidirectional i actually think that this sounds better than steinhardt's it doesn't have that me metallic spring to it uh, noise and um, but we have a little bit i think we have if i if i try hard we have a little a little play between the clicks uh compared to the steinhardt the steinhardt is rock solid so anyway, let's cut to the chase. I had a really hard time deciding between these two. And you know, when you buy a new watch, it's always uh, uh, exciting with the new new one. So it's really hard to uh, to make up your mind, uh, to make a, take a rational decision because you're uh, uh, you're liking the new things in life. And it's, it's always like that. But I actually decided to uh, sell the Steinhardt and uh, keep the Davosa. And um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit of why. First of all, I like the bezel a little more on the Davosa. Uh, the turning action is smoother and it doesn't sound as uh, metallic as the Steinhardt, but I really like the Steinhardt's uh, sturdiness of the bezel. It doesn't move, it doesn't budge an inch. Um, and the Davosa has a little minimal play in its bezel. The Cyclops is far better on the Davosa. As you can see there, it's in a totally uh, different league of its own. Uh, one thing I like about the Steinhardt more is actually the larger hour markers. Do you see the size difference of, on these? Which also means that the Steinhardt has far better uh, loom than the Davosa. Because you see, the hour markers are bigger, uh, twice as big, I, I'd say. So they have a lot of more loom applied on the hour markers that the Davosa lacks. Uh, so if you're a loom uh, junkie, you should go with the Steinhardt, no doubt. The crown, I really like the crown on the Davosa much more than on the Steinhardt. It's big, it really reminds me of a Squale crown. And actually, I have uh, I saw it uh, written in some kind of forum that this is actually the same case that they use on the Squales. Uh, but I don't know if that's 100% uh, accurate, so I'm not gonna take it for a fact and uh, as you see the lugs here the bracelet it goes flush with the lugs almost but on the devosa it they have this kind of first first uh, link so it sticks out it, protr it protrudes over there so i know what to say about that i like the bracelet a little bit more on the devosa uh, because it's uh, broader it feels, um, I mean, they're probably both the same quality, good bracelets on both. But since the Davosa bracelet is a little bit thicker all the way uh, to the clasp, and since the Steinhardt is a little bit thinner, I prefer the Davosa, actually, with the bracelet. Uh, and Steinhardt, they have a... Actually, that's why I returned the 42 millimeters because the case shape is really uh, the lugs don't curve down as much at all. It's really kind of a flat case. But on, on the Davosa, you see they curve down far more and it feels just a little bit more comfortable on the wrist. Oh, sorry, guys. I almost, almost forgot about this. Actually, one thing that the Davosa has that the Steinhardt lacks is 
a diverse extension and it's a big extension I've never seen this kind of extension before so that's one plus for the Davosa so actually and actually the Davosa is more expensive than the Steinhardt. The Davosa is $800. The Steinhardt is around $650 maybe, something like that. So uh, even considering that the Steinhardt is a GMT movement, uh, which is a more complicated movement, uh, the Davosa is more expensive. The Davosa brand have been around for a while. I think they've been around for uh, longer than the Steinhardt brand. And... Uh, I've heard that they have really great customer service with the, the owners of the brand uh, uh, talking to you directly and uh, you can get in touch with them and uh, I've seen a couple of reviews from uh, Random Rob and Bruce Williams and all they all talk about the, the great uh, and personal uh, customer service from the Davosa brand. I've uh, been in touch with Steinhardt customer service a couple of times and they're really great to deal with. I've actually talked to them on the phone, but it's not like you're talking to the owner of the brand directly. Uh, and I have gotten the impression that it, in, in the Davosa case, you can actually talk to the owners straight up. Okay. I actually asked my wife I told her to, my wife doesn't know anything about watches. I basically don't know anything about watches, but I asked my wife to close her eyes and take these two watches in her hands and tell me which watch felt like the higher quality watch. And uh, she said the Davosa, I don't know why. And the other day I asked her, which one do you think looks nicer? And I'm kind of an outlandish guy. I like a lot of colors. I like things that are too much. I'm not, uh, but my wife said that she really likes the simplicity of the Davosa dial. It's not, not as busy as the Steinhardt. Uh, even though I like busy, I can agree with her. The Davosa looks cleaner and um, more elegant than the Steinhardt. In a perfect world, I could keep both, but I can't right now. So I'm gonna, I've already sold the Steinhardt. It's on, it's gonna be shipped today to its new lucky owner. And I think he's gonna appreciate the watch and give it the love it needs. And maybe one day I'll come back to it. Uh, I always come back to Steinhardt. I've done it three times now, I think. Uh, but for now, I'm keeping the Davosa and uh, I'm, they actually have a great limited edition one, uh, the Ternos 500 Pro, but it's, it's bigger and it's really thicker, but I love the dial. It's a, a Sea Dweller, the James Cameron one. It's a homage to that watch and I really love it, but it's, uh, I think it's like a thousand dollars. So it's pretty, pretty expensive and it can only be bought in the US. So I don't know if I'm gonna track that one down or I'm just gonna leave it be. But for now, I'm sticking with the Tavosa Ternos 200. Really loving the watch. And uh, yeah, that's all for this video. I hope if some of you out there are in the making, uh, in the process of making the same decision, maybe I helped you out. Maybe you like the Steinhardt more and you think I'm doing the wrong thing here. But you know how it is when we love watches. We buy and we flip and we sometimes we, we regret selling watches. And sometimes we buy them back again. So um, let's see where this uh, takes us. Well, until next time, I hope you have a great summer and bye-bye. Uh,